Here are some of my reasons why it's difficult getting a data scientist job. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. I'm a data scientist based in the UK. So when I was a data science graduate, getting a data scientist job was hard. It took me about seven to eight months as a graduate to finally land my first data scientist job. And even now, now that I have some experience, it's still pretty hard to get another data scientist position. For me, it's certainly easier now compared to back then, but I think there's a lot of reasons why the general experience of getting a data scientist job is pretty bad for most people. So here are the timestamps and in this video, I'm gonna go over my reasons why I think it's difficult getting a data scientist job. It's probably gonna be a bit of a rant, but I haven't seen that many YouTubers that are from the UK talking about this. So if you're from the UK or you're planning to work in the UK, hopefully you'll find this video useful. Let's get right into it. If you're watching this video, you've probably already looked around at some data scientist job descriptions. And if you're like me, you might have said out loud, what the actual f is this shit? In the industry, there's a lack of agreement on what a data scientist actually does. Even in top tech companies, they struggle to give out consistent job descriptions. In fact, most people don't even know what the differences are between a data analyst and a data scientist, which if you're interested, I have a video on that already, which I'll link up here in the cards above. This all means that if you're somebody applying to a lot of data scientist job positions, it makes it really hard for you to know if you actually fit the job description. This can make you feel like you have to learn absolutely everything to stand a chance for a single data science interview. And I found this especially true if you are a data science graduate. In contrast, jobs like software engineering have a much more consistent job spec. If I was a graduate looking for a software engineering role, I'd probably have a much better idea on what to actually focus on. In data science, I just don't get that same feeling. I've noticed companies like Meta and other big tech companies having different types of data scientists, which I think is definitely the right direction. And although the responsibilities of a data scientist will be around for a long time, I think maybe in five to 10 years, the title data scientist might not be around anymore, but I think that's for a completely different video. Hopefully the situation gets better as the industry matures. Now, despite what all the popular data science certifications and boot camps tell you, they're not enough by themselves to get you a data scientist job. Data science has quite a high barrier to entry because it's a mix of maths, computer science, and business domain knowledge. And if you're really good at all three things, then congratulations, you're officially a unicorn. Most people tend to only be good at two of the three subfields, which is already rare. And if you combine that with the previous point that job descriptions are really confusing, then it makes applying for data science jobs feel much harder than it really should. I think the educational requirement for data science has decreased over time but if you have no experience then for a lot of data scientist roles you'll probably need a master's to stand a chance and for a lot of people doing a master's is a big commitment and it's not easy nobody likes to pay an extortionate amount for a year of coursework and exams also data science has gotten more popular in general and there are more and more universities offering data science masters so that means there are now more graduates wanting to enter data science which increases the competition you're also competing against people like me who had an analyst background that were looking to transition into data science and if you're a fresh graduate with no experience then you're in a pretty bad position because you're competing against two groups of people. There's a lack of standardization in data science interviews and this is probably the most annoying thing when trying to get a data scientist job. Interviews already take a long time and they're already quite stressful and if you don't know what to expect then how can you actually prepare for them? And again data scientist job descriptions are usually not very clear so you could go through the entire interview process and then find out at the end that the job isn't what you expected it to be. This has kind of happened to me before and the main thing I'd recommend doing now is to try and dig into what the team is like and what the role is like during the interview process so that you know exactly Exactly what it is that they're looking for. But even if you do that, if the interviewer is not very honest or they don't know much about the role, then you could still very well run into the same problem. I really wish we had a more clear and standardized process for data science interviews because at the moment it's nothing comparable to, for example, software engineering. So if you're applying to a lot of data scientist positions, just be prepared for anything because I've had ones that require a lot of coding. I've had ones that require doing a take home project, which sometimes I don't agree with because some companies get you to do their work for free and then they'll tell you to go away. I've also had ones that were a bit more statistical and I've had ones where the director's grilling me hard with questions about their product. It's an absolute mess, to be honest. There are websites like Glassdoor where people can share their interview experiences, which do help to a certain extent, but it depends where they had the interview because the same company might have different offices in different locations. And it depends on when they had the interview because if they had the interview a long time ago, then it might not really be relevant anymore. I think having no standardized interview process really demotivates the new people trying to enter into data science and until there is one, I think this is just going to waste a lot of people's time on both sides. 
So this is similar to the catch 22 of gaining experience to get a job, which is if I can't get experience to get a job, then how can I get a job to get experience? In data science, domain expertise is really important because if you're a data scientist and you're trying to make impact, then you need to know the product and industry extremely well. Now, this is a problem if you're trying to get an entry level data scientist job. As a graduate, I mean, you already don't have much experience. So what are the chances that you'll have some domain knowledge as well? Probably not much. I find that companies like to test how you would apply data science on their products. But if you don't have any firsthand experience on a similar product, then it's often really hard to know the answers. Personally, I think this is an intuition that builds over time as you work with more products and companies. But again, that's the catch 22. How can you get domain knowledge to enter the domain if you can't enter the domain to get the domain knowledge in the first place? And then let's say you're a healthcare data scientist and you want to move into the music streaming industry. So companies like Spotify, for example, then the business domain knowledge required is going to be extremely different. Obviously, a lot of data science skills are transferable. So after a few years of experience, it still makes it much easier getting another data scientist job. But if you're new to the field and you're trying to break into data science, then this just makes it that little bit more difficult. It's becoming increasingly in demand for data scientists to know how to write production level code. If you don't know what being in production means, then it's just something that sits in the pipeline between the business and the customers. Now, I'll be honest, I can't write production level code, but looking at the more senior data scientist positions, especially for companies that take data very seriously, they need you to be able to code extremely well. Unfortunately, it's not enough just being able to use a Jupyter notebook to make some visualizations or build some models. At some point, things have to move from the experimental stage into the production stage. And I think it's becoming increasingly obvious that software engineering practices can't be ignored by data scientists anymore. And the reason why things like MLOps have taken off is because there's a clear need to productionize machine learning. And it's becoming the same for data science. If you can write production level code, then you don't need an engineer to translate your bad code into production code, which means that you save time and the business money, effectively killing two birds with one stone. If you're like me and you don't come from a computer science background, then learning how to write production level code can be really difficult. There's probably a lot of bad habits that I've picked up from not learning how to code properly in the beginning. And since I don't work in an environment that heavily productionizes data science or machine learning, it can be really hard to learn by myself. So these were just some of my thoughts from my relative short data science journey. Some of the things that I talked about in this video might not really have a solution, but overall, I hope the industry gets better over time. Let me know in the comments down below some of your experiences when looking for a data science job. I have a video up here on the three data science lessons that I learned the hard way. I also have a video up here on the five things that I wish I knew before becoming a data scientist. You can also follow me on Instagram. And if you want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.